Welcome to Electron Line. Our third example is slightly different again. In this case, we're pulling up on the block rather than pushing down on the block. There shouldn't be a lot of difference, but at least it's nice to see an example of what we should do here. We're assuming that the force is sufficient to cause the block to accelerate, and we're looking for the acceleration of the block, assuming that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.3. Okay, let's first find the components of the force. If we assume that the angle is 45 degrees, let's take theta being 45 degrees, then of course we're going to have a horizontal component and a vertical component of that force. So we have F in the x direction is equal to F times the cosine of theta, and we have F in the y direction, which is F times the sine of theta. Knowing that, let's also look at the forces between the block and the floor. We have the force of gravity pulling down, so it's going to be m times g, but the weight is going to be lessened by this component right here, which means the block is going to get pulled up a little bit, so we realize there's going to be a force relative to the ground caused by this force, which is f in the y direction, which is f times the sine of theta. The reason why we need that is because we also know there's going to be a normal force pushing back, and the normal force pushing back is going to be equal to mg minus this force right here, minus F times the sine of theta, which means that the friction force on the block is also going to be less. The friction force in this direction, force friction, which is going to be equal to normal force times mu, and of course, in this case, the normal force will be mg minus f times the sine of theta times mu. All right, now we're ready to start calculating the acceleration, assuming it's going to be in the direction to the right. We know that f equals ma, which means that the acceleration is going to be equal to the net force on the block divided by the mass of the block, which is all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration divided by the mass. And so A equals the force aiding the acceleration is going to be the x component of this force, F times the cosine of theta, minus the friction force, which is going to be mg minus F sine theta multiplied times mu. And we take the whole thing and divide by the mass of the block. Now we're ready to plug in the numbers and see what we get. The acceleration is F, which is 40 newtons, times the cosine of 45 degrees, minus mg, which is, uh, let's see, 5 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared, minus mg, which is 5, times 9.8, times the sine of theta, sine of 45 degrees, and the whole thing multiplied by mu, which is 0 0.3, and divide that by the mass of the block, which is 5 kilograms. Starting with the right side, it gives us 49, minus 49 times the cosine of 45 degrees, and we multiply it times 0.3. So minus this quantity right here is 4.305. 4.305. That's subtracted from this, so we'll put a minus sign in front of that, plus the quantity 40 times the cosine of 45. That's 29.28. And divide the whole thing by 5. And so acceleration is equal to this minus that, minus 4.305. Sometimes it's nice to see the intermediary result and divide that by 5. And so we get 4.8 meters per second squared as the acceleration of the block when it's pulled by force, not horizontally, but at that angle. So that's how we do that. Notice in this case, the force pushing down on the floor is going to be diminished by the y component of the force pulling on the block, so that the normal force is the weight minus that component right there.
And that's how it's done.